Welcome back for another episode of Seeking Discovery. It is an exciting day out here at the bus because today we're going to be working on electrical. And not like in the past where we were tearing out electrical, today we're going to be working on putting in new electrical. So I'm going to be starting to rough in the wiring for the DC system as well as the AC system so that eventually our schoolie will have power. So that's the goal today. And I'm going to take a note from one of the other builders I follow on YouTube, Navigation Nowhere, where Mike built a spool holder for his DC wires. And I'm gonna start by doing that with some scrap materials so that it's easier for me to pull the wires and keep it all organized as I go through running everything out today. So that's what we're gonna start with, make that holder, and then we're gonna start running wires. Okay, like I mentioned, today's goal is to start running the wires in the bus. So to do that, I've got my AC wire here, which I opted to go with 14.2, which is the same as like your residential household, uh, mainly because there isn't gonna be a large AC load on the bus. It'll really be things like the refrigerator, uh, charging computers, things like that. Um, so I decided the 15 amp is just fine. Ultimately, I'll put 15 amp breakers in. Um, so that's why I went with the 14.2. Um, this was about $60. Um, so hopefully 250 feet will be enough, but I will find out once I start running it. And then for my DC system, I decided to go with 12 gauge stranded wire. Um, and as you guys saw, I just made a quick little holder for it so that it's easy to pull. And I got that in black and red because all of our DC lines need two wires. Um, so basically that the DC system will be things like uh, USB chargers or LED lighting on the ceiling, things like that. Um, so there will be a lot more DC wire ran in the bus because DC is ultimately more efficient and then you don't have to run it through the inverter. So that's the goal now. Now that I've got the holder ready, we've got the AC wires ready. And the other day I mapped out on the floor where I want everything to kind of go. So I'm going to start running this wire and as I do it, I'll be cutting it, roughing it in. And the reason we're doing all of this right now is because the spray foam, once that goes in, will kind of encase all of this. So I need all my outlet boxes in, I need the wire ran and secured. Um, so that's ultimately what I'm doing today is trying to get more stuff prepped so that we can get it spray foamed. And once it's spray foamed, then the real fun starts because you can start building out walls and frames and more plumbing type stuff and really start seeing everything take shape. Um, but there's still a lot of work that needs to be done before that can happen. So let's jump right in. So the first thing I did to start getting ready for the electrical is I added some of the electrical boxes. These are just standard boxes you can get at your big box store. You can see back here I've put two on the wall, one for where the stove will be, the other is where the refrigerator will be, and there's a couple of other spots along the walls that these have gone in. So that was step one was to get these gang boxes in. The rest of these will go into other structures so they're not necessary to go in until after spray foam is complete. Well, it's definitely a warm one in Florida today. I'm sweating a little bit out here in the bus, um, but it's not terrible. So, update for you guys. Um, I've got most of the AC electrical roughed in. So what I mean by roughed in is I've got the wires ran, stapled, where some of the boxes need to be in the walls. I have those boxes in place. Um, so I'll show you guys what I've been working on, kind of how my layout is. And I just wanna give a little quick disclaimer. I am not a licensed electrician. Um, this is merely how I have chosen to do my electrical. Um, so don't take this as a specific how-to. This is more of a how I chose to do it. Um, but if you guys see something that you're concerned with in the comments or concerned with, leave a comment below. Let me know. 
um, but I'll show you what I've got so far. So up here at the front of the bus, we've got one wire hanging out, which will become an outlet later in the couch. And we've got another wire spooled up back there, which will be for an outside outlet, which the box isn't in yet. So along the lower side, we've got the wire stapled down with wire staples, um, which are just little nails and plastic bridges, and you just hammer them in place. Here we've got wires round up for a 120 volt, which will be installed later. Um, so that one is just kind of hanging out. Then we come up to a box, which will be for the stove to plug into. And even though I'm using a propane stove, you still have to plug it in for like the clock, sparker, things like that. And then down to the next one is where the refrigerator will be plugged in. And then from there, we've got ultimately where the um, breaker panel will be. So you can see there's three lines. I'll have three main circuits, each of them 15 amps, and I've got each of them labeled. So the way I'm breaking it down is the passenger side of the bus will be one circuit, the driver side of the bus will be another circuit, and then the four exterior outlets in the corners of the bus will be a third circuit all its own. So that's what these three wires are. That's the circuit breakdown. Um, ultimately, the goal is to have as little on AC power as possible, which is why I'm limiting how many circuits there are. So back here, we've got another spooled up wire, which will be a uh, outlet which is built into the closet side wall, which is a sharing wall of the bedroom for mounting a TV and plugging it in. And then back here, we kind of have what looks like a rat's nest right now. Um, there'll be an outside outlet there, which isn't in yet. And then I have a junction box here because ultimately to connect the driver side of the bus, the wires will be ran under what will become the bed frame. And I'll put an outlet on the face of the bed uh, wall, bottom wall as well. So junction box here to ultimately bridge the two sides later. Um, and then on the opposite side of this big sheet of foam, we've got the other junction box here to wire it in. We've got the rear side of the bus, another outlet outside. We've got an outlet here for if I eventually want to do a washer dryer combo. So that's an easy access there. And then again, these are all stapled down to my wood framing members so that they're not going to move. We've got a coil of wire here, which will ultimately feed one of the kitchen countertop outlets. And then behind the outlet or behind the countertops, we get to where the desk will be. And I have it so that there's two outlets under the little desk work area. So easy access for if you're at the couch or if you're at the desk. And then ultimately there's another small loop here, which will go to an outside outlet. And then another loop here, which will go to an outlet right behind the driver's seat. So that's kind of the breakdown of where I have my AC roughed in. And the reason this is about all the farther it needs to go is because ultimately I want to get spray foam scheduled soon. So now the next step is to work on the DC wiring, which will be for like the ceiling lights, any of the chargers, because all of my USB stuff will be off the 12 volt system, um, water pumps, things like that. So that's the next step. And I've got my little handy dandy spool dispenser down here. So I'm going to use that to pull wires uh, with my red and black so that I have it very obvious which wires are what for the DC system. So this is future Ryan out here during editing and I realized I didn't film any kind of an outro for today's video. So I'm doing a quick little voiceover explaining what's going on in this video and then we will wrap up. So I'm currently running the DC wiring and I had it separated into red and black and I'm everything ready to go for the ceiling lights and taping it up, stapling it into the wood and having it secure and ready to go. So this is an important part of prepping your electrical especially because I wanted it done before spray foam. So if you guys like these kinds of videos, please give a big thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see when new videos come out. And if you've got any questions, drop them down in the comments below. And I look forward to sharing this journey of converting a school bus into a tiny house on wheels.